All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We covered the Dunchain channel and the code to compute the Dunchain channel using Pandas in the last uh, video. Now we are actually going to implement our trading app. So if you have any experience with the IB API, you know, you know, luckily for us, a lot of it is so-called boilerplate, meaning it's it's the same for every single app. That said, there's a lot of different ways to implement these things. And, you know, I give quite a bit of documentation here on what every single thing is doing. So the initialization method, how we're handling errors, managing the order IDs, fetching historical data. You can look at that, but let's actually go through the app itself. We'll go through the code, okay? All right, so we declare a class called trading app and we inherit the eClient and eWrapper classes from the IB API. So by inheriting these classes, we get all of the functionality that's provided by the eClient and eWrapper. Typically, we make calls or requests through the eClient class, and then we get we override the callback methods through the eWrapper. And what, what I mean by overriding the callback methods is that when we make a call to the IB API, like for historical data, we do that through eClient. Trader Workstation handles that request. It requests it from the data servers. It comes back to Trader Workstation, and then it triggers various eWrapper methods that react to events. And once those methods are triggered, we are responsible for implementing the code that handles those requests, okay, or those callbacks. So that's what we are doing here. Again, I have quite a bit of documentation here. Uh, in our initialization method, we return none, okay? We instantiate our eClient method with our eWrapper instance, uh, kind of confusing. We create a dictionary, an empty dictionary, okay, with a key of integer and the values are data frames, okay? So that is the self.dict and we uh, self.data, and that is gonna be our container for our data. And we, set, and we have our self set to none. So next order ID is important for the Interactive Brokers API. It's what ties the client app to a order. So if you have, you know, you can have up to 32 running applications, client applications, and you need to be able to tie your order from the right client. And that's what the, the order ID does. And it just has to be an increasing integer. So the IB API gives us functionality to ask what the next valid order ID is, and we will store the next order ID in this instance method, or instance variable here. Okay, so error, this is our first eWrapper method. So we are overriding this method and handling the errors. So if an error is presented through the IB API, we get the request ID, we get the code, the string, and any advanced information, and we just simply print it out. Now, obviously in a, a production app, you would be doing all sorts of different things with the with the error. For example, if you have an, an error executing an order, well, you'd wanna to check to see if that order is still open and cancel that order, right? So that's just one example. In our case here, all we're doing is printing out the values, okay? Here is our next valid ID. So this is another eWrapper method. And every time, so when the Interactive Brokers API connects, this method is triggered and the order ID is passed in. So when this is called, we first instantiate the next valid ID or we call the next valid ID method in the order ID. It increments the order ID and we set our order ID to next order ID. So basically every single time this method is called, we get the next valid order ID that we can use for submitting orders. Okay, we implement a custom function here called get historical data. And this, is, this method will ask for a request ID and a contract. And we will create an empty data frame. So we, we remember that we have self.data, that is a dictionary, with a request ID as the key. So whatever request ID we pass in becomes the key in our dictionary. Then we set it equal to an empty pandas data frame with four columns, time, high, low, and close. We then set the index of that data frame to the time column, okay? So we have an empty data frame sitting in a dictionary keyed by its request ID. Then we call the eClient method, request historical data. 
for the Interactive Brokers API to service our request. So we are asking for historical data. We pass in the request ID, the contract. If you add an empty string for end date time, that is right now. So we are asking for data up to right now. We are asking for one minute bars for the last one day. And we are asking for the midpoint. We set use regular trading hours to false, meaning that we are asking for overnight outside regular trading hours data, assuming that the contract has data outside of trading hours. The remaining method arguments here are just for formatting. And then if we want to keep the subscription open. Okay, we wait for five seconds to let the request be processed. And then we return self.data at the request ID key. So we return the pandas data frame. Well, you might be asking, well, where are you populating the data frame? You just created an empty data frame. That actually happens in the historical data callback, okay? So once we request for the historical data, Interactive Brokers goes and through the eWrapper method historical data, every bar triggers the historical data method to be called. So for every single bar, one minute bar for the entire day, we get a bar object and the request ID passed. So if we get 500 bars, this method is called 500 times, okay? We first get the empty pandas data frame, okay? We then basically populate that pandas data frame. Now I know this looks like a lot of crazy code, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you get a hang of pandas. We say pandas.loc, so this is a label-based indexer, so at a particular row, set the date date stamp, so we get a timestamp from Interactive Brokers, turn that into a date time object, and at that location, at that row, for each of the columns, high, low, and close, set those values equal to high, low, and close, okay? So we're just taking a row from our data frame, creating the date time index for right now, and then creating the open high, low, close row in that, the columns for that row. We then make sure that all of our values are floats. We set that data frame equal to our class level variable at request ID. And this all happens within five seconds. And then this self.data is actually populated and returned, okay? so. All of this is happening very quickly in a couple seconds. And when you call get historical data, the result is a pandas data frame full of historical data. And we will see that in a second. We have a get contract method. So the contract method instantiates a contract using the IB API, sets the symbol equal to the symbol. This is for a stock. We have security type stock, exchange smart and currency USD. Then we return that contract. Same with place order. So now note, we are both creating the order object and we are actually calling the eClient ID to place the order. So this is placing an order and we increment the order ID by one and we then print out a message saying that we place the order. Now there's a couple areas to improve this basic scaffolding here. We can add asynchronous handling. So instead of just waiting five seconds, we can actually create basically a message that says the request is fulfilled. Um, I already mentioned with logging and error handling, that's very important. Uh, I've only implemented a single very straightforward market order. We would definitely want at least limit orders, probably stop loss orders as well within the actual app itself, okay? All right, so next session, next, excuse me, the next video, we will actually start the app. I'll show you how the market data is populated with Pandas and we'll let it run, okay?